Welcome to a new segment on the channel called Media Mondays, where on Monday, usually, I will upload a video reviewing a piece of media I enjoyed or am just familiar with enough so that I can make a video about it. From movies to music and everything in between, I'll talk about it all and put it on the screen. And at the end of every review, I will rate the piece of media I'm covering as either meh, mediocre, a masterpiece, or a massive piece. Of shit. This will be done on a scale from 0 to 5 and will have 4 different categories all rank to average into an overall score. Characters, story and plot, rewatchability, and the finale. To kick off our first Media Monday, I wanted to talk about a show I don't see talked enough about. I mean, I saw a lot of reaction to this show on YouTube, but not too many that actually like give a good review of it. And the ones that I did see that did a review of the show missed the brilliance of the show and why it's so good beyond all the jokes and all the memes. I hope that this review helps people truly understand the gift that is what we're talking about today. And yes, the irony that my first Media Monday is probably not even going to be uploaded on a Monday is not lost on me. But I do what I want, so get off my case. Anywho, I really want to talk about how beautiful, brilliant, and bold a little anime by the name of Sakamoto Deska truly is. Before we start, thank you for watching my videos. I hope you all like this new content I have planned and this video series idea as a whole. But without further ado, let's get to it. In class 1-2 of Gakuban Prefectural High School, one student has had everyone's attention since day one. He's stylish during class, he's stylish at lunch, and he's even stylish when he's sent to stand in the hall. Every move he makes is cool, cooler, coolest. He lives an overwhelmingly stylish high school lifestyle, and his name is... Sakamoto desu. Sakamoto Deska is a Japanese seinen animated series, or seinen anime if you prefer, that was aired in 2016 and is based on a manga series by the same name that was written and serialized in 2012 by mangaka Namisano. The story revolves around the character Sakamoto, who is the coolest character in the series, and that's not an opinion. He is objectively the coolest character in the show. But anyways, if I had to sum the series up in one sentence, it would be, High Schooler is so cool he makes everyone notice his coolness. But you see the length of this video, so you should know that one sentence is definitely not enough to describe the show in all of its greatness and coolness. Sakamoto is one of many characters that have importance in the series. We have the freshman delinquent Asusi Maeda, or Ashan by his peers, the class heartthrob Aina Kurunuma, the model turned comedian Seda Yuya, the best friend Yoshinobu Kubuta, and in my opinion, the next best character in the show after Sakamoto, the upperclassman delinquent Hayabusa Sho who occasionally writes his name as 8823, which I think is funny and cool. There of course are other characters as well, but these five are definitely the most memorable and important to the series in my opinion, outside of Sakamoto of course, and another character which I shall be speaking about much later. The show starts out a lot like the second episode of Naruto, where the class delinquents attempt to make Sakamoto look like an idiot by placing an eraser on a door, and when he opens the door it falls down and hits him on the head, and the, the girls are telling him no, don't do it, wait, wait a minute. Is this like a common prank to do in Japan? How popular is this thing that I've seen it done in three other anime already? Oh well. But instead of taking the Kakashi Sensei route and letting the eraser hit him on the head so it can boost the morale of the class, he opens the door and catches the eraser the most over stylish pose I almost thought he was a Jojo character. Class delinquents, disappointed that Sakamoto continues to best them at every turn when they try to prank him, decide to lock him in the school science lab, ship him down, and send a pic of it to all the students in the class. However, given how DTF every girl in the school is for that dude, I don't think this prank is going to be as detrimental to his social standing as they would have hoped for. But before they can send this literal CP of Sakamoto to the entire female student body, the three students forget their cigarettes burning and start a fire in the science lab. Sakamoto then takes it upon himself to save the day, in classic Sakamoto fashion of course. The day is saved and then the three delinquents have a bit more respect for Sakamoto, especially Atsushi, who decides to make an image he took of Sakamoto during all this his new lock screen. Very cool. In case you haven't caught on already, this is the typical formula of a Sakamoto episode. Someone does something to try to make Sakamoto look like an idiot or get the better of him, but he uses coolness and secret techniques 
to turn the tables on them, and then they realize that they can't best Sakamoto, or they just decide to be friendly rivals with the guy, or they just leave him alone altogether. This, of course, happens to Atsushi as stated, Aina, Seda, Kubota, or more so his mother, and many other minor characters whose names I don't care enough to remember and don't really matter. All of these stories seem to be one-off interactions that have no real connection until the start of my favorite character's involvement in the series. Sho Hayabusa is here, an upperclassman delinquent who is the head of the sophomore troublemakers. He's a lot like Sakamoto, and the parallels are obvious. He's smart, he's cool, and everyone around him admires his skill, his style, and wants to be just like him. There is just one little problem though. Sakamoto has gotten the attention of the school delinquents, and not in a good way. So, Hayabusa decides to have a little chat with him. Sakamoto, giving literally no fucks at all about what this bad boy has to say, basically just ignores him and his gang's targeted strikes inconvenience him, because all they end up doing is make him look even cooler, which is, you know, par for the course for Sakamoto. Side note, but apparently Sakamoto has names for all of his class tools and utensils, and the ruler's name is Smith the Ruler which is just hilarious to me for some reason. So, the other delinquents get the idea that if they can't hurt Sakamoto directly, then they will need to hurt someone that he cares about. His friends, or specifically, his best friend, Yoshinobu Kubota. So, they abduct Kubota and shave all of his hair off, and then they write, Hayabusa was here, on his head. Sakamoto, realizing what these bullies did to his friend, decides to go confront Hayabusa after school like he was told to, so he can fight for Kubota and get his identity back. However, before the fight even starts, a cop on a bike? What is this show? A cop on a bike tells them that fist fighting is illegal, and that they're going to be arrested if they continue with that. But they tell him that actually, they were going to play pushing sumo instead, whatever the hell that is. So, the goal apparently is to push the other player over without moving your feet, and honestly, this whole pushing sumo fight was a lot more serious and intense than I originally was expecting it to be, and it wasn't even a real fight, well, you know, a real fist fight. In order to win, Sakamoto stands up like an antenna and to the delinquents, it looks like he's trying to call down a bolt of lightning to hit Hayabusa. During this, the other delinquents try to help out Hayabusa so he can win, and attempt to pull Sakamoto's feet from under him so that way he loses. However, Hayabusa tells them that no matter what, Hayabusa intends to win this pushing sumo competition without help or by cheating. Eventually, Sakamoto does push Hayabusa over, but Hayabusa lands in a taxi cab, because Sakamoto tells him that along the way, he realized he wasn't even the one he needed to fight, and just call him a taxi cab to get him out of the rain because all this fighting was pointless anyway. Wow. What a dude. I mentioned these two episodes specifically, these are episodes 1 and 5 by the way in case you're wondering, because I feel like the two characters that take center stage, aside from Sakamoto, really get to shine and we can see their potential in just their debut episodes. I could talk about the time Sakamoto pretended to be a medical doctor just to buy porn videos at the library, the time Sakamoto literally kicked rocks with some little kids and walked on some lines, the time Sakamoto got a bunch of women at a dinner party to sim for him just because he burped during karaoke. The time Sakamoto basically dominated at a school sporting tournament while the class clown who does nothing but make B tier B jokes attempted to sabotage him at every turn. Or the time Sakamoto shot someone with a balloon shield while he was using a balloon gun. But instead, I want to discuss Hayabusa and Asushi's episodes a bit more, and you'll see why near the end. During the penultimate episode of the series, episode 11, Atsushi wanted to have some fun in the snow, since he comes from the mountains and knows all the cool winter tricks so that we could show all of his friends, including Sakamoto. Since Sakamoto isn't from the snowy mountains like Atsushi, and has never even seen snow in his life before, Atsushi thinks he finally has a chance to do something better than Sakamoto and even show him up. But from snow angels to snowmen, and even a snowball fight, Atsushi just can't beat him. Even during the snowball fight, Sakamoto tried to give Atsushi one of his pocket warmers because he didn't want to see his friend catch a cold. However, Atsushi feels as if this kind gesture was nothing more than Sakamoto looking down on him, feeling pity for him because he knew that Atsushi was going to lose and that Atsushi never stood a chance against Sakamoto. Because of this, and his many, many, many failed attempts to stand on even footing with Sakamoto or even best him, Atsushi falls into a state of depression from being bested and even beaten in his own element by a guy who has never even seen snow a day in his life. But what about Sho Hayabusa? Episode 5 isn't where Sho's story ends. You see, we learned in episode 10 that his dad lost his wife a long time ago, and it's just been him raising his four sons, Hayabusa being the oldest of course. His dad meets some woman, and he tells her that he and his son enjoy a lot of fancy things and exotic food. 
However, this can be further from the truth. And so now Hayabusa is asking Sakamoto for help to put on a show so that this woman will marry the dad and won't think that they have no class, so that way that the kids can have a mother in their life. Sakamoto is skilled in this area of expertise with the fancy stuff, hence why he's being asked by Hayabusa for this help. Sakamoto's idea is literally two kids in a trench coat, with Hayabusa as the head and himself as the arms, so he can do all the fancy stuff when they're eating dinner. The plan, somehow, goes perfectly. And while Sho's dad, the lady, and the two boys in a trench coat are walking down an alley, the woman is then revealed to be an extortionist of all things, and some men come out of the alley to try to jump the dad and take his money. Sho asks Sakamoto if he knows how to fight, and since Sakamoto says no, then they both agree that they should switch roles. Now, Sakamoto is the head, and Hayabusa is the arms and legs, beating up the men left and right that are trying to jump him and his dad. This, also, somehow, feels perfectly, without any coordination whatsoever, but I honestly love it for that. At the end of all this, Hayabusa and Sakamoto remark on their similarities and also how they complement each other's weaknesses, making up for what the other lacks, and it honestly just made me enjoy Hayabusa's character and his growth even more. And now with this episode, it brings the close to show Hayabusa's antagonistic arc towards Sakamoto and has been wrapped up so nicely. It would appear that there's no longer an antagonist for Sakamoto to face throughout the show. Or is there? Enter Mr. Fukase. Introduced at the beginning of episode 8, Mr. Fukase is a 30 year old man who is still in high school because this is anime, so why not? He's a very intelligent man who has two kids and has been divorced as well, if I recall correctly. And when he gets bored of not showing up to class who can stay in school even longer, he decides to play games with the popular kids. But these aren't games like pushing sumo or Ouija boards, which are popular among 9th graders within the Sakamoto universe for god knows why. Instead are psychological games, games that are made to make all the other students hate the popular kids and eventually get them to run out of the school. Disappear, is what he calls it. But I'm sure we can all figure out what that really means. The delinquents don't want any trouble with Mr. Fukase because Mr. Fukase is very good at finding someone's biggest insecurity and using that against them to do his bidding for him. What does any of this have to do with Hayabusa, Atushi, and Sakamoto? What an excellent question that you definitely didn't but totally should have asked. You see, it is because of Atushi and Hayabusa's conversations with each other during episode 8, Mr. Fukase learns of Sakamoto's existence, and after figuring out that he's one of the popular kids in the school, he doesn't like that very much. So, Fukase-san tries to manipulate two characters whose names I literally cannot be bothered to remember into framing Sakamoto for the destruction of the class art project, which, being Sakamoto, goes over about as well as you'd expect before he catfishes the two morons. Yes, that's literally what the characters within the universe of the show call them, with a helium voice can to wrap them out. And the day is saved, realizing that those two literal morons couldn't best Sakamoto. Fukase then sets his sights on Atsushi to use him to fight Sakamoto in the snow. Since Atsushi already has been in the snow for a while and Sakamoto's not, Mr. Fukase tells him that he'll have the advantage over Sakamoto and even gives him the idea to have that snowball fight with him in episode 11. When Atsushi fails to win, he comes to school the next day and talks to Atsushi and tells him that having Sakamoto in his life is what made him lose his way and figure out what's really important. And most importantly, the only way he can stay true to himself is to take out Sakamoto for good. Yes. This 30 year old man, with nothing better to do with his time, decides to manipulate a depressed 9th grader to murder the most popular guy at school. Anime logic, right? What are you gonna do? During the last episode of the show, episode 12, Sakamoto is given the honor of delivering the graduation speech for the senior students, even though he's a freshman. While this is happening, Atsushi walks on the stage with a metal bat as if he just came out of the One Punch Man universe and is swinging at any teacher who gets in his way to end Sakamoto. Being Sakamoto, he tries to avoid a physical confrontation with Atsushi by dodging all of his attacks, which leads to Atsushi getting even more upset and tries to pursue him onto the banister rail of the school stage. When Sakamoto dodges one of Atsushi's swings, Atsushi doesn't have the balance to keep himself on the rail and falls off. But Sakamoto saves him. Even when Atsushi is beating his hand and beating his face with that metal bat to force him to let go, Sakamoto still holds on until he loses his grip, and then he even drops his pants in order to save Atsushi. Atsushi Maeda, the same person who tried to strip him down, the same person who forced him to dress up as a doctor in order to buy some form, the same person who bullied him, stole his stuff, threw his desk out a window, the same person who did all these horrible things to him throughout the series, been nothing but basically cruel to him this entire series. Atsushi Maeda, Sakamoto, did this to save him. And even when Atsushi could have been expelled for attempted murder and battery, Sakamoto told the faculty that all of it, all of this 
was just an elaborate performance for the graduation ceremony. Sakamoto could have let him get in serious trouble, but instead, he stood by his friend and he made sure that he was alright until the very end. Now for my ratings and final remarks. Characters. I give the characters a 5 out of 5. It's very easy to relate to a lot of them and their interactions with Sakamoto. They all learn to change and develop because of Sakamoto, and for someone who hates characters that do nothing or learn nothing by the end of a series, I enjoyed this very much. As far as Sakamoto goes as a character, he's what I like to call a flat character archetype. He's consistent, and he doesn't need to change, because through his superlative actions, others are able to overcome their shortcomings, grow, and develop. And it's because of his interactions and his intentions is why I enjoy this show so much. Story and plot. The plot of Sakamoto is the fact that he is very cool, even if you read like the back of the novels or the Wikipedia articles, that's literally what it is. The plot is that he's cool. And that's it. It's very simple and easy to write, but hard to execute without becoming predictable or boring. Knowing Sakamoto will always come out on the other side relatively fine can be annoying to some people who see him as a Gary Stew with no flaws. And I would agree that there was no substance deeper than that, than just a cool guy who does cool things because he's cool. I saw like I'm watching Logan Paul or whatever. More on that later. The story doesn't need to take place on an alien world or some fantastical future or some post-apocalyptic society to be engaging or interesting. It does its job very well and I enjoy it for that. I do wish that we got to see more of the overarching story come together in the first half of the episodes and also introducing Fukase much earlier instead of like two thirds into the show so we could see more of what he does. But since that's my only real gripe with the pacing and the plot of the story as a whole, it gets a four out of five for me. Rewatchability. Is this show worth rewatching? Absolutely. Sakamoto is a show that I would recommend to literally anyone, no matter who they are, because it's just that damn good, in my opinion. Even where I work, when I showed the show to a couple of my coworkers, we couldn't stop quoting it long after we finished watching it, because it was just that enjoyable. And it's so rewatchable, even, that when I asked the people around me if I should talk about this show, JoJo's Bizarre Adventure, or another show, all of them said Sakamoto, except for one person. And I asked like 20 people, so that's a lot of people. That's 95%. Sakamoto gets a 5 out of 5 for this. It's definitely a show that's worth rewatching, either with yourself or with friends, but watch it with friends because it'll be a lot more entertaining if you do. And lastly, the finale. The reason I even include this in my ranking system is because the finale can either make or break your series or movie. I mean, look at Game of Thrones for example. Does Sakamoto's finale hold up to me? Yes. And here's why. At the start of the show, in the very first scene, we have Sakamoto catching an eraser that Atsushi left for him to hit him on the head and make him look foolish. And at the end of the show, Sakamoto is catching Atsushi after Fukase tried to erase him. All Atsushi wanted was to best Sakamoto, or at least make him look foolish. And in the very last episode, it finally happens when Sakamoto has to literally drop his pants just to save Atsushi. He looks really dumb, but he also looks really cool, and he did all this just to save Atsushi. Parallels between Hayabusa and Sakamoto shine through throughout the series, and Cho is even telling his band of school delinquents that no matter what, they need to have something to hold on to and believe in, that no one can take away. Because if you don't, Mr. Fukase will pull the rug from under you at your lowest point and use you, just like he did with Atsushi, and just like he did with the other two morons earlier. Also, while I was rewatching the show to make this video, a thought dawned on me that perhaps Fukase set Atsushi up on purpose to fail at the snowball fight, so he could drag him even deeper in depression and use him at what's truly his lowest point. Despicable. There are many Mr. Fukases in the world. They all have such bleak outlooks on life and will drag other people down into misery with them if given the opportunity. Mr. Fukase, while wrong about many things, is right about one thing, however. When talking to Atsushi in order to manipulate him into getting rid of Sakamoto, he tells him that Sakamoto is like the moon that shines in a dark sky, and those that try to reach him will fly towards it like insects towards a light bulb, flying towards something that is forever out of reach because it can never be Sakamoto. This is very true. It's a very accurate for why people even fall into depression due to running a never-ending race where the finish line is in sight, but never any closer than when you started. But the takeaway that Atsushi had from this is the wrong way to look at it. It is indeed impractical to chase the moon in the sky, but you don't need to chase the moon to be inspired to soar high in your life. You don't need to be the pinnacle to be acknowledged, and you don't need to try for something that you simply cannot do. Sakamoto is an ideal. Sakamoto is a concept. A concept that cannot be obtained. But that's okay. Because he doesn't need to be. 
he can be a source of inspiration to do better, to be better, to better yourself and grow. He inspires all of us to do better. He inspires those around him to do better, to be better than yesterday. And at the end of the day, isn't that all that matters? To keep growing while staying true to yourself? This should go without saying, but the finale is a perfect 5 out of 5 for me. The ending is truly beautiful, well written, and fully encapsulates the thematic genius and brilliance that is. Also, there's a bonus episode where Sakamoto flies a shuttle and writes his name and launches smoke while we're flying to outer space, which is cool, I guess. All of these scores shown here give Sakamoto a final average of 4.75 out of 5. Truly a masterpiece in every sense of the word, if ever there was one. But that's going to be where I leave off for now. I hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks for staying until the end. And a big thanks to all 21 of the voices in my head for getting me to this point. Tell me what you thought of this video and what you want to see me talk about next time. But until that next time arrives, I'm Invisible Bill, and that's all for my spill. Like, comment, hit subscribe, you'll never know when, but I'll see you next time.